Senator Tulfo. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm not supposed to be here today because uh, yesterday, uh, Secretary uh, Carlito Galvez came to my office and brought some of his uh, staff and uh, showed some documents um, in uh, response to uh, some of the questions I raised during the last hearing. But uh, late last night, I received some text messages from people I know in the military, uh, particularly in the uniform member of the uh, uniform personnel, uh, PNP and uh, AFP. And, uh, and I'm duty bound to ask these questions. But uh, I just want to reiterate na um, isa sa mga purpose ko sa mga pagtatanong, ito ay para maliwanagan po yung mga malilit nating kababayan, uh, so to speak, kasi sila po yung um, kailangan magkaroon ng kaalaman tungkol sa peace process decommissioning na nagaganap ngayon. And ako po ay full support. Hindi po ako kumukontra, full support po ako tulad ng lahat ng Pilipino. Um, hangad ko po yung magkaroon tayo ng katahimikan uh, and especially doon po sa mga kasundaluhan at sa members ng PNP na nagbuwis ng buhay um, sa pagganap ng kanilang tungkulin. So, gusto ko lamang na masagot yung mga katanungan na it's been hounding some of uh, from some of the members of the uh, military and PNP. So, mamaya na siguro ako magtanong. So, I have some few questions. Anyway, easy lang po yung questions ko. Uh, piece of cake. Sorry pa nga. So, mamaya siguro after Senator Jim Roy. Thank you, Senator Tulfo. Senator Marcos. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the uh, questions of the decommissioning and peace in Mindanao continue to be matters of grave concern, given that as late as uh, the 18th of February last week, we are aware that a bloodbath occurred yet again with the MSU bomb attack killing four civilians, six soldiers, two suspected Daula Islamia and four other troops injured in Barangay Rama in Munay, Lanay del Norte. Clearly, our job is far from over, and there is much that remains to be done. Um, indeed, there is much skepticism about the decommissioning effort, uh, given the deep dissatisfaction of many already decommissioned uh, combatants, as well as the local government officials, who continue to question the lack of detailed plans, milestones, and timelines. And um, these are the aspects that we need to uh, derive. Uh, details, dates, numbers, and uh, legal basis for all. I am in receipt of uh, the requested information. There are three pieces of communication that were uh, sent to me um, last evening. I've not been able to peruse them as uh, carefully as I would like. Mm. Pero narito at uh, sa palagay ko, may katanungan pa rin kasi hindi po maliwanag yung uh, ibang bagay. Kaya magtatanong na lang ako katulad ni Senator Tulfo Mamia para sa kalinawanan ng napaka-importante mga bagay-bagay. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Uh, before we proceed, I would like to instruct the uh, ComSec to please acknowledge uh, our resource persons present here today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. The committee would like to acknowledge the presence of our guests from the Department of National Defense Under Secretary Angelito C. De Leon, Major Ian Justin Sag Sagario, and Lieutenant Colonel Clarence M. Bautista. Pro from the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Colonel Roland C. Escalona Jr., Lieutenant Colonel Engelberto Ni Nioda, Captain Norsaldi Dimaporo, Lieutenant Colonel Eric H. Colvera, Captain Ferdinand Buscato, Captain Cheryl Villarta Igay, from the Department of the International from the Department of the Interior and Local Government, Attorney Jesse Lanete, from the National Security Council, Deputy Director General Nestor C. Herico, from the Department of Social Welfare and Development Under Secretary Alan Tanhusay, Ms. Norhata Benito, 
Mr. Dante Bolos, Mr. Neil Wade Mendoza, Attorney V. Con de Guzman, Ms. Donna Rose Kalugay, from the Office of the Presidential Advisor on the, on the Peace, Reconciliation, and Unity, Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr., Senior Yusek Isidro Purisima, Presidential Assistant David Dishano, Presidential Assistant Cesar Villano, Presidential Assistant Will Ben Mayor, Director Jordan Bayam, Director Wendell Orbeso, Major General Francisco Ariel Felicidario, Director Farah Grace Naparan, Director Darwin Wally Tiwi, Ms. Janine Nicole Liao, Ms. Mary Francis Rivera, Mr. Renz Joshua Posedio, Ms. Caris Macalanda, Ms. Maria Catherine Janice Sidro, Mr. Mark Sherwin Bayanito, Ms. Queenie Destura, from the National Amnesty Commission, Attorney Jamar M. Colayan, Attorney Rizal Tadeus Acas, Ms. Maria Camille R. Santa Maria. From the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, Director Benjamin M. Castro, Attorney Albi Juarez, Mr. Aaron Carl T. Dacanay. From the Mora Islamic Liberation Front Peace Implementing Panel, Bangsamoro Government Center, Engineer Mohajirin T. Ali, MNSA, Ms. Marifa Agar, ha Ms. Hasna Adam. From the chief, from the minister, chief, from the Bangsamoro government, Attorney Lanang T. Ali Jr., Attorney Mary Ann Arnado, Attorney Khalil Denise Alcomendras. From the Philippine National Police, Police Brigadier General Job Russell Balakit, Police Brigadier General Percival Augustus Placer. From the Independent Decommissioning Body, Mr. William Hovland, General Ray Ardo, Professor Maria Aguha as observers. Uh, we also have a representative from the European Union, Director Je Reginald Pastrana, and Mr. Kenny Nodalo, also as an observer, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Komsek. First of all, I would like to apologize since I, we came in late because I was uh, talking to some members of uh, the MILF uh, returnees in my office and that uh, they were uh, complaining. Uh, and they executed... Uh, executed uh, an affidavit which still is unsigned and uh, I will just uh, uh, talk to Secretary Galvez uh, later with regard to their uh, problem. Okay, the persons we are assisting and representing first approached uh, Acting Mayor Omar Ali of the Municipality of uh, Datu Salibo, Maguindanao del Sur. Mayor Ali then contacted his political allies in Maguindanao del Sur and he was able to refer his concern to Mayor Balayman of the Municipality of Pandag, Maguindanao del Sur. Ang naging problema po nito ay uh, ito mga MIL, MILF uh, rebel returnees ay nabigyan na po ng uh, 100,000 na pinangako po ng gobyerno Ngunit, nung uh, pagbigay sa kanila ng 100,000, yung kanilang mga commander ay uh, kinuha po yung kalahati. And that is what, uh, uh, what that is one of their concerns. no? And if we have 26,000 uh, uh, combatants who are, uh, who are willing to uh, uh, surrender, uh, uh, 1.3 billion yun mapupunta ron sa mga hindi mapupunta ron sa, sa mismong mga rebel returnees, kundi sa mga commanders nila. So, siguro kailangan natin na uh, paimbestigahan yung, uh, yung, mga, yung ganitong klaseng problema. And I have uh, um, intimated to Secretary Galvez a while ago in my office uh, to please investigate uh, these wrongdoings. Okay, 
Senator Tulfo? Yes. Um, my first question, um, Secretary Galvez or anybody from your office can answer this. Um, 100,000 pesos each were given to uh, MILF surrenderees. Hindi po ata pantay. Why sa MNLF, 45,000 lamang allocated for its surrenderees. Uh, bakit magkaiba po? So MILF, 100,000. MNLF, 45,000. Sir, actually, sir, yung nasa natin, no, yung sa 100,000, uh, uh, sa MILF, dahil kasi mayroon ko sila ng decommissioning, yung, ano, yung sa MNLF po, sir, is uh, stenciling. Wala pa po yung uh, talagang decommissioning because uh, on our final peace agreement with the MNLF, wala po tayong provisions for decommissioning. So, yung gagawin po natin, yung initially, yung 45,000, considering na uh, according to RA uh, 20 of the final peace agreement, those who will be not be integrated which should be given uh tiyatawag natin socio-economic package. And basically, ang, ang gusto nga namin po, uh, pare-pareho po yung ibigay. Ang intention po talaga natin is uh, uh, 100,000 din po ibigay natin sa MNLF. Initially lang na ibigay natin yun because uh, ang ano pa lang natin is only stenciling pa po ang ginawa po natin, uh, Your Honor. Okay. Stenciling, yeah. uh, Secretary. Yes, yes sir. Uh, kasi ang po, ang, yun nga po ang ano natin. Uh, kasi ito po yung... Uh, Nagiging problema po natin sa final peace agreement. Can you please enlighten this committee what stenciling is all about? Yung yung stenciling po ng firearms nila, uh, kinukuha po ng ano, ng... Uh, 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 bali po sir, nire-record po natin. Kasi yung part po yun, ito part po ng ano natin yan na gusto po natin ma-recover po lahat ang mga loose firearms. So isa po ito yung mga tinatawag natin ano, na, na parang uh, uh, ating uh, proseso para at least uh, i kukukunin natin yung ano yung firearms ng ano ng uh, ng ating brother MNLF and then stencil po natin and then we have an agreement na meron tinatawag tayong firearms control Ganun yeah as a follow up question to that uh, before that uh, senator Tulfo would like to acknowledge the presence of senator Bato de la Rosa okay uh yung mga sino surrender ng firearms 4000 and all right yan po ba ay ni register Meron ho ba kayong uh, database where those firearms are registered? And I would like to uh, follow up also dun sa request nung kausap po mga taga-military na dapat yung serial numbers, if they are uh, logged in sa database ninyo, dapat accessible yan sa PNP at NBI para kung halimbawa nagkaroon ng operations, yung mga grupong yun, eh, they can uh, cross-check doon sa mga na-recover nila ng mga baril versus doon po sa mga sinurender ng mga baril. So, ito ba mga baril na sinurender 4,000? Are they uh, logged in sa isang database? Sir, nandito po yung ating uh, uh, vice chair ng independent decommissioning body uh, in the person of uh, Mr. Hovland from Norway. Sila po ang nag-ano po ng proseso. Mr. Mr. Hovland, the firearms, the 4,000 firearms, how are they being handled once they were surrendered to uh, the uh, government? Yeah. What Mr. kind of accounting Sir, do we do? Your, your, your Honor, uh, the, uh, in the independent decommissioning body, we, we receive and decommission the, the firearms. Uh, we register them. We do a function test of the firearms. So all the firearms you receive are, are operational. And then we store them according to the agreement. We also take in the registration number of the weapon, and according to the agreement between the, the parties, that is to be confidential for the independent decommissioning body. Mm -hmm. Can we have uh, records of those firearms that were surrendered, the serial numbers, and are they stored in, in a database where it will be accessible to the PNP and NBI and even uh, the military? Like I said earlier, if there's an operation conducted by these authorities and and in the process, they were able to recover firearms in those operations. At least they can make some cross-checking uh, to ensure that none of those firearms they recovered during their operations came from the weapons that were surrendered from the decommissioning process. So uh, for now, we are bound by our mandate given to us by the two parties, the government of the Philippines and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. And in the terms of reference, of the IDB, it says that all information, data, or opinions gathered 
generator of exchange in connection with the work of IDB are confidential and may not be devolved to an organization, individual or an entity. Uh, but of, if the parties would, of course, agree that we should share that, we could be open to do so. But for now, we're bound by our mandates. So, so right now, it's confidential, so you cannot divulge to us uh, the firearms, what kind of firearms are those, the serial numbers, that's confidential? You mean the Filipino people doesn't have the right to know? So Sir? We, yeah, yeah. So, Your Honor, we in the IDB, uh, when we finished each phase of decommissioning, we send a report to our principal, which is a two-piece panels. I understand, sir. I understand. I know where you're coming from. I know what you're saying. But the thing is, uh, there there was more than two point something billion spent for this program. In exchange, you know, uh, they have to surrender their weapons, and I just want those weapons accounted for. First, where are they stored? And then, second, how are they being handled? And then, third. Um, they should be in a database, like I said, for the third time, which will be accessible to everybody, especially the PNP, the NBI, the AFP, in case they need to, to check those uh, database, those uh, serial numbers of those firearms, then they can always go to that computer and, and look, it, look it for themselves. So, Your Honor, I, I understand your, your question. I understand your, your need to, to do so. I, I really do. So we have our mandate now, and I can also answer what we do with weapons. We store them in a secure storage area. And then according to the agreement, uh, after the four phase, or when the parties agree, we will put them beyond use. So even, even a video, you can show us a video or even pictures? Of those weapons? So we, we had... Uh, Still think, confidential? No, we had two large events in Cotabato where we had display of all the firearms that we received for the face uh, witnessed by... Okay, can uh, you show us some videos at least, uh, or pictures? Because 4,000 is a lot of firearms, and I just want to make sure that those firearms are really well kept and being protected. Yeah, so, Your Honor, we're very glad to su to submit pictures and videos and video. of all the weapons so you can see that. Mm -hmm. so, so right now you cannot submit to us uh the serial numbers of those firearms it's not stored in any database because you said it's confidential unless both parties agreed to divulge those kind of information to us to the filipino people is that what you're saying sir that is correct your honor mm -hmm. okay then uh, with the Mr. permission Chair, of uh, yes, senator with the permission Tulfo. of senator Tulfo. Yeah. yes ma'am go ahead senator. yes with the permission of senator Tulfo. Uh, Republic Act 10591, referred to as the Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Regulations Act, mandates all government agencies, military and law enforcement organizations, LGUs and corporations owned and controlled by the government, provide the PNP with an inventory of all the weapons and ammunition they possess. Why is it, therefore, that the 4,625 decommissioned firearms are not, inclu are not included in said uh, inventory and as stated, you are bound by your mandates to keep these records confidential. Bakit ganon? Labag ito sa batas ng Pilipino. So ibig sabihin, yung mga nag-surrender na MILF, hindi sakop ng batas ng ating bansa, parang mali naman yata to. Panluloko naman yata ng bansang Pilipino to. Bakit hindi sila tatalima sa batas na ang bawat mamayan ang kinakailangan sumunod? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, can I add to the point of yes, Senator sir. Amy? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, uh, I, I don't know if there's a conflict between the what what is the existing law uh, that uh, our resource person is talking about if it runs in conflict with the firearms uh, comprehensive law. Uh, I don't know. We, we have to study on that because uh, maybe, I'm sure, the, the ones who, who formulated this law ay talagang uh, inobserba itong firearms, the existence of uh, uh, the firearms uh, comprehensive law, comprehensive firearms law. So titingnan natin siguro, Mr. Chair, kung saan ang complex dito. Yes, I just like to follow up. Um, having gone through the papers submitted, um, ang hinahanap ko po, sinasabi ninyo yung Annex for Normalization. What is the written basis, the legal basis 
for uh, the number of 40,000 MILF combatants and the legal basis of the 7,000 firearms. Meron bang legal basis yan? Kasi inahanap ko rito. E eh, sabi, annex. Asan yung annex? Nasa annex lang ng normalization. Yun ang sinasabi ninyo. Uh, pero wala naman dun sa annex, nakatakda yung 40 at saka 70,000. Anong basehan natin ng lahat niyan? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, 